Hello students. Today I will begin with the explanation of unit 4 of the essay Freedom by G.B. Shaw. And now to sum up. So he is moving towards some concluding ideas. Wipe out from your dreams of freedom the hope of being able to do as you please all the time. If you remember at the beginning of this essay, he defined freedom. Uh, he defined freedom in a way that when a person, an individual is completely at his own will to do whatever he want, whenever he want, for how long he want. So doing everything according to one's desire was defined by Shaw as real freedom. So now he's saying that after the discussion and after reading these, you know, three units, whatever matter he has uh, presented here, now what we should do is we should completely wash out our dreams of freedom and the hope of being able to do anything at our own will. Now he's giving, giving reasons for this. What he's saying is why we should wipe out our dreams. For at least 12 hours of our day, nature orders you to do certain things and will kill you if you don't do them. So he says that uh, if we look at the distribution uh, of the, uh, the time for human works, we will find that 12 hours of the day we have to do certain things which are according to the demands of nature. And if we do not fulfill these certain responsibilities or things, then nature will kill us. This leaves 12 hours for working. And here again, nature will kill you unless you either earn your living or get somebody else to earn it for you. So he says that uh, after we cover up the first 12 hours where we are bound to do certain things according to the demands of nature, the remaining 12 hours are meant for work. For these 12 hours, we'll have to work. Whether we work or we hire somebody else to work for us so that we can earn our living and fulfill the other necessities to survive. And if we do not work, then here again nature will kill us. If you live in a civilized country, your freedom is restricted by the laws of the land. Enforced by the police who oblige you to do this and not to do that and to pay rates and taxes. So he says that if you are a citizen of a very uh, civilized country, then your freedom will be under control. Control of what? Control of the laws of the land. Then he says that these laws will be enforced or executed by the police. And these police will, uh, the policemen will uh, do what? They will put you under obligations. Obligations in a sense that they will dictate to us what we need to do and what we don't need to do. We should do or we should not do. And above all, we'll have to pay taxes also and rates also for certain things. If you do not obey these laws, the courts will imprison you. Now, if we mess up with the legal proceedings or the laws of the land, then what will happen? If we do not obey them, then we will be imprisoned by the court. And if you go too far, kill you. And if you break the legal uh, uh, set of rules to an extremity, then what will happen? Then according to the law of the court, you will be given death sentence and you will be killed. If the laws are reasonable and are impartially administered, you have no reason to complain because they increase your freedom by protecting you against assault, highway robbery and disorder generally. Now what he says that if these laws of the land are sensible, they are reasonable, they have a sound backing of some logics uh, behind being implemented and then other than this, they are impartially administered, executed. Then you would have no reason to complain about anything. Why? Because these laws will increase our freedom by protecting us against any kind of attack, robbery or any kind of disorder 
in a general manner. But as society is constituted at present, there is another far more intimate compulsion on you. Okay, now he says that if we look at the constitution of the society, how it is structured, there is one more familiar compulsion which has been imposed upon us as the members of the society. What is this compulsion? That of your landlord and that of your employers. These compulsions are related to our landlords if we are tenants and the other one is of our employers under whom we are working. Your landlord may refuse to let you live on his estate if you go to chapel instead of the instead of to church. So the landlord will have his own whims and his own desires and choices for you which you will have to follow if you have to continue living in his uh, in his house as a tenant. So if you go to chapel instead of church he can kick you out of his house or if you vote for anybody but his nominee and if you vote for somebody else other than the person whom the landlord is supporting then also he can move you out of his house or if you practice osteopathy if you are a, a practitioner of the treatment of bones and muscles osteopathy then too he can move you out of his house or if you open a shop or if against his will you open up a shop then too the landlord can move you out of his house anytime. Your employer may dictate the cut, color and condition of your clothes as well as your hours of work. Now if you are employee then your employer, your master will dictate you certain terms. What should be the shape, the color, the condition of your clothes, what material you should pick up or and even the hours of your work you will be under his complete control. He can turn you into the street at any moment to join the melancholy band of lost spirits called the unemployed. So here again, just like the landlord can move us out of his house anytime, similarly our employer can move us out of his firm, his company or his office whenever he wants and we will find ourselves standing amidst the group of the unemployed people. In short, his power over you is far greater than that of any political dictator could possibly be. So, his power of controlling you is much more greater than any political dictator. Your, own, your only remedy at present is the trade union weapon of the strike which is only the old oriental device of starving on your enemy's doorstep until he does you justice. So he says that in these particular conditions, the only remedy is to go on a strike. As a member of the trade union, to go on a strike, to sit on the doorstep of your enemy, your employer or maybe your landlord and uh, then starving for certain days till your employer or your enemy does justice to you. Now, as the police in this country will not allow you to starve on your employer's doorstep, you must starve on your own if you have one. Now again, if the police, according to the laws of the land, does not allow you to starve at the doorstep of your employer, then what you have you will have to do? You will have to starve on your own doorstep. If you have a house of your own, then you can starve at the doorstep of your own house. The extreme form of the strike, the general strike of all workers at the same moment is also the extreme form of human folly. Folly means mistake. Why? If completely carried out, it would extinguish the human race in a week. So he says that the general strike is a complete mistake. All the workers should not go on strike at the same time. Why? Because if all the workers sit on strike, then what will be the consequence? The entire human race might extinguish within a week. And the workers would be the first to perish 
and the fact is that if the workers sit on strike all together at the same time then if we are thinking about the, ex uh, the extremity of the extinguishing of human race then the workers would be the first one to end up or to perish. The general strike is trade unionism gone mad. So how Shaw has defined general strike? For him general strike is trade union gone mad. This is not something sane. For him it is an uns uh, insane thing. Sane trade unionism would never sanction more than one big strike at a time with all the other trades working over time to support it. Okay, so he says that sensible trade union will take up the decision of going on one big strike with some workers while other unions, other traders, uh, other trade workers working over time so that the people who are sitting on the strike, their work is compensated. And people in general are not uh, facing any, are not compelled to face any trouble due to this strike. So here uh, Shaw has, uh, you know, brought to light a particular aspect of strike and that to general strike. So for him, going on a general strike at the same time by all the workers is not a sane step. If it uh, talk about the sensible step taken up to be taken up by trade unions then they should decide to go on a strike with some workers and other workers should work over time in order to compensate the loss which will which might take place due to the strike so that's all for the explanation of unit 4 of the essay freedom by Shaw thank you